think of the World Cup and you usually think of Brazil. They really do just go hand in hand with the tournament. While they totally dominated through the 50s, 60s, 70s and then again in the 90s and early 2000s, recent times have not been so kind to the Samba boys. On home soil they lost the World Cup in humiliation to Germany in a 7-1 thumping and then were beaten by the Netherlands in a third place playoff 3-0. Russia may be different for them though, especially since Tite has pretty much named all of his squad. But what if we use football manager to pick his team? Just like we did with England, but letting FM13 decide who is in the squad. And with that being said, let's start off with the goalkeepers. IRL, Tite has stuck by Alisson, Edison and Neto. But we've gone totally different here. Instead, we've got Napoli's Rafael, Casio and Renan Ribeiro. Between them, in real life, they've actually only won four caps. So this is quite a big shock. In fact, Edison on my save is playing in the Croatian League and Alisson is playing in Bosnia. As for the defenders, well, not too many shocks here. The big names of Marcello, David Luiz, Thiago Silva, Danilo and Alexandro are all in the squad. More surprising though is the inclusion of Rafael, yep, the ex-Man United one. There's no room for Dani Alves either, but Rever is in there, which is also kind of a weird one too. Moving over to midfield, and a Brazil team with four defensive mids is just horrendous, isn't it? Well, in this one is even worse, because they picked bloody Sandro. Remember Sandro? Yeah, he did not do too well in England with Spurs in QPR. Joining him are Lucas Lever, Romelu, and Paulinho, who surely is the most surprising player of the year. When Barca signed him, everyone derided them, but now he's pretty much a key cog in their machine. As for the wingers and attacking mids, we're missing out on Coutinho and Costa. Instead, we've got Giuliano, Wellington Nem, and Lucas Moura. Giuliano has actually been excellent for Fenerbahce this season, netting 12 in 23, so we'll probably see him in the Russian summer. Unlike Lucas Moura, who, let's be honest, has been pretty crap for Spurs, and has only played like two games so far. And finally, the forwards. Brazil is all about the attacking flair, and honestly, this summer, with the likes of Neymar, Gabriel Jesus, Firmino and potentially Luan, they have a really, really good force to be reckoned with. On this game, however, they are, well, a little bit light up front. Neymar is obviously the best player in the team, and incredibly is still at Santos for some reason. There's also Bernard, who has no chance of getting back in the Brazil team, especially considering he hasn't played for them in over four years. And finally, most disappointing Brazilian forward of all time, or maybe in a long time, Leonardo Damião. He was meant to be the next Fat Ronaldo, but fell well short of the mark. He hasn't played for Brazil in more than five years, and his tally of three in 17 matches, it's easy to see why he was dropped. Still, let's just be thankful that Fred is nowhere near this team. So for proof, here is the squad, and now we're going to jump forward to the date of the World Cup final to see how Brazil got on in the tournament. Okay, so we've simulated it, and incredibly, Brazil have won the World Cup. Uh, they started off in Group D, a pretty tough group with Italy and Poland and then Honduras. Uh, they didn't actually finish top of that group. So they beat Poland 4-0. Uh, they beat Honduras 6-0 with Damião scoring a double hat-trick. Okay. And then he lost to Italy 2-1. Uh, not bad. Not, not too bad, I guess. Um, second round, they took on Argentina. It won 2-1 with William and Damião getting another. Jesus Christ, how many goals did he score? Uh, they faced England in the quarterfinals with David Luiz and William scoring. Um, big old Tom Huddleston there getting an 8.3. Such a huge player. Uh, Belgium in the semi finals where Neymar finally scored. He's done something. Um, that's not a bad Belgian team, like, is it? Uh, Lucas Mara come on and did something. Okay. And then they needed extra time to beat Croatia. A 10-man Croatia, with David Luiz scoring again, and Lucas being the man of the match in the World Cup final. Um, right, okay then. Um, let's have a look at the stats. So, they didn't go and beat him, we know that much. Who scored the most goals? Benteke scored 8, Damiel scored 7, and he scored 6 of them in one match. Jordan Rhodes came third, everybody. Jordan Rhodes... What is Scotland doing at the World Cup? Jordan Rhodes came third. Robert Snodgrass fourth? What the hell is going on? Also joint... Bizarre. Um, where's the team of the tournament? 
Uh, David Luiz gets man of the, the tournament, best player and man of the tournament. Goalkeeper was big old Steve Mandanda. Young player with some weird looking regen. Okay, dream team. All right, okay, so there's quite a few. This is like Captain Ro <laughs> Oh, of course. Joe Allen as well. Why not, eh? Why not have Joe Allen in there? <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's, oh, there's quite a few Brazilians in here. Marcelo, Luiz, Danilo, William, uh, Neymar, and Dami Ao. Dami Ao's been amazing. Shame he's terrible in real life. Oh, just really lazy. Uh, Raphael gets on the bench. Thiago Silva gets on the bench. Alongside Jordan Rhodes, Robert Snodgrass, Joe Allen, and of course, Ryan Shawcross. So that is a Brazil team. They won the World Cup, incredibly. Um, from actually not the greatest of teams compared to what their team is going to look like this year. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, we'll be sure to like and share it. And um, yeah, let us know how you think Brazil will get on in the World Cup this summer. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time for another one.